Patris et Fieldi et Spiritus Sancti Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, in Dominus Regum, Benedicta tu in Mulieribus et Benedictus Fructus Ventus tu Jesus, Santa Maria, Mater Dei, Ora pro nobis, Victoribus Nucan, Ora Mortis Nostrae, Amen. In Dominus Patris et Fieldi et Spiritus Sancti Amen. All right, in my last video that I just made, I went over um, judgment time, right? Um, from And I read some private revelations from Marino Restrepo. And just so you know, I'm reading out of this book, um, Winning the Battle for Your Soul. It's like six bucks on Amazon. Um, and it's put together by Christine Watkins over at Queen of Peace Media, I think it is. Um, and again, like I said, it's private revelation. We don't have to believe it, but he does have a church approved ministry um, called Pilgrims of Love. And he um, is approved by his bishop and I think an archbishop as well. So make of it what you want. I find the imagery that he explains to be quite helpful to aid in what I have already come to the conclusion of myself and by reading other church documents um, but I want to read quickly I already did a whole two-hour video on the Eucharist and I didn't have this book with me or in my possession at the time that I made that video I would have included it in there but I think it's important to get a visual of how he was shown the Eucharist um, and so if you go back and listen to my last video I said that because we are because Catholics um, have the responsibility of the Eucharist, we have a greater burden put on us, a greater responsibility. But at the same time, if we overcome, our place will be higher in heaven. Um, so I just want to read this. The biggest act of mercy ever given to humanity is the Eucharist. Nothing compares. If it weren't for the Eucharist, our entire planet would have been annihilated already by Satan. God showed me his mystical presence during the Mass, which is so enormous that if we could but see one tiny glimpse of this mystery, we would walk into the church on our knees. Every single pew in a Catholic church, every single fount of holy water is guarded by angels. The altar, the walls, outside, every column, statue, everything is guarded against the enemy. And yet Satan can still walk into a church. He enters attached to a prisoner in chains as his fallen escort and guardian. This is his only way in. The Lord also showed me how Satan, having infiltrated the church through those who are in sin, is creating the most incredible state of confusion and spiritual disarray for the weak and lukewarm in the faith, who have not firmly decided on which of the two spiritual territories they reside. The lukewarm parishioner is easy prey for the devil. He easily believes those who are spreading erroneous teachings, and during Mass he is distracted by this person's dress and that person's cough and another's way of walking. He is taken elsewhere by his own thoughts because he is not there visiting the Lord. He is visiting his little mischievous ways. We cannot anchor our faith in the humanness of the Church. It is important to understand that when we enter a Catholic Church, the Lord himself is there to greet us. If we could only visualize the spiritual nourishment we receive from the church. If we could only fathom the beauty of the spiritual life in the church during the celebration of the Eucharist or visit or visit to this blessed sacrament while praying the stations of the cross or during any devotion, especially the rosary, we would enter the church with great joy. And my parish actually recites the rosary every morning starting at 7 30 leading up to the eight o'clock mass which is an awesome practice every time we take communion we can help rescue souls i'm going to read that again this is this is the responsibility responsibility of the of the christian of the catholic christian every time we take the we take communion we can help rescue souls at that very moment, the Lord makes us Christ-like, according to the degree that we've made room for him in our hearts. Through the Eucharist, our body becomes like Christ's body, our blood turns into Christ's blood, and with it, the Lord is able to rescue a soul that otherwise would have been condemned. We are told by St. Luke in the book of Acts that after Pentecost, the apostles had no fear and would preach in the temple, 
where the enemies of Jesus congregated. Before preaching, the apostles would bless and break the bread at home, celebrating the Eucharist. Knowing that the apostles would walk by on their way to the temple, people would line up the sick and possessed on the sidewalks. Scripture speaks of how Peter's shadow passing by would heal and deliver them. Why? He was carrying his power of the Lord's body and blood within him. My priest, um, our parish, you know, our main priest, our pastor of our parish, does an excellent job of reminding us every time he gives a homily that we, once we leave Mass, we are carrying Jesus in us, with us, to be a light to the rest of the world. Our gift to the world is bringing Jesus to other people. It's beautiful. Angels and saints who exist in the external present and are not confined to time and space can see the light that we are holding and radiating. It is not a light that could be seen by us, for it would be blinding, like the light radiating from Moses' face after he spoke to God on Mount Sinai. The Hebrews couldn't bear to look his way, so they covered his face with a veil in order to talk to him. After we receive communion wherever we go, wonders are taking place. People are being healed. People are being delivered. The same kinds of miracles happen when we have spent time in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. And anybody can go to adoration. Not just Catholics. Not just Catholics in a state of grace. Not just those who can receive communion. We will know about this economy on the day we appear before the Holy Tribunal of the Lord. Until then, we won't even notice them. In this hidden way, the Lord keeps us humble and small, protecting us from spiritual pride, which is Satan. Jesus told me he had gifted me with the greatest responsibility that can be given to a human being. It was to be a Eucharistic instrument of reparation. That is what being a Catholic means. This doesn't mean that Catholics are better than anyone else, nor does it mean that they are the only ones who will make it to heaven. Every time a person takes communion in a state of grace, he not only nourishes his own soul, but also feeds souls around the world. Such is the power of receiving God. And through that grace given to us, more good works are able to be done, and which makes in our name, well, in God's name, but through us, which makes our place in heaven higher when we die, hopefully, Though if, in a state of, if we're taking it in a state of grace. Because there's a flip side to this. Shunning that responsibility, making sacrilegious communions all work in your opposite favor. So they work towards getting you to hell. <laughs> so it's like a double-edged sword, right? Um, every time... A person takes communion in a state of grace. He not only nourishes his own soul, but also feeds souls around the world. Such is the power of receiving God. Those who are Catholic are therefore responsible for all souls of humanity, regardless of where those souls are and what they are about. Catholics are responsible because of the Eucharist. Having such power at their disposal, they must use it, especially because no one besides those who have the Eucharist can. That is crucial to our understanding of why it's imperative that we receive the Eucharist worthily and that we receive the Eucharist frequently. Um, Jesus has no other body now but ours, right? Like he comes and makes bread into his body, into his flesh, but he can't walk out. You know, the bread can't the bread that turns into his body can't walk out of the church and do miracles. We are the vessel, the container. It is imperative that we keep our vessel clean by going to frequent confession and that we take it seriously. And that's all, I mean, that's our whole job. That's it. That's our mission. Um, so I just wanted to share that because it, I thought it was excellent imagery especially the part about the angels guarding everything. Um, it's definitely true. That's all I'm going to say about that. So have a good day.